Hello and welcome back to another Freestyle Footbag shoe review on Passback, and today we're taking a look at two variations of the Reebok Vector Smash. The two variations of the shoe are the regular Vector Smash, which has a mesh upper, and the Vector Smash Synth, which has a synthetic upper. Both variations retail for $65, so we figured why not try both and figure out which, if any, could be good for the sport. Based on the pictures, these look like their spiritual successors to the Reebok G units, which continues to be one of the most popular shoes for the sport, even though they've long since been discontinued. I've never owned any G units, but we were kindly lent a pair by Alan Sneed that we will use for comparisons. Let's open these up and take a look. So as mentioned, the only difference between um, the Vector Smash and the Vector Smash Sin is the material. The structure of the shoe is identical. The surface shapes are the same. It's just the outer material. So since they're the same, I'll just, I'll leave this one here and I'll just do my analysis on this one. So right off the bat, the structure is very reminiscent of the G-Unit. The sole is a little taller than over here. Just the tad bit smaller surface here, but otherwise it looks it looks good. It's got a nice curve on the sole. Even though this is a smaller area than the G unit, still a, a nice surface. You might not be able to tell that well on camera, but the toe on the vector is slightly pointed while the toe on the G unit is really round. The sole, other than being, you know, a different style of sole, um, the vector is a bit thinner. It actually reminds me of a laver sole because of the circle there. And actually the shape is pretty similar. Quick comparison to the laver. But probably somewhere somewhere in between the G unit and the laver. Put nice padded heel back there. That's nice. Oh man, that's really stiff. Um, so good for uh, longevity, maybe not the best for a crank, at least until they, uh, they break in. So the material is synthetic, um, so these surfaces are a lot thicker. When we do mod it, which I'm sure that I will, I'll cut the outer material to leave what's inside. Looks like it's about the same material as the G-Unit. Okay, so just to get a baseline, let's uh, get the weight of the G-Unit. I have no idea what this is. Uh, and should be noted, this is, this is a 9.5, this is a 10, so there could be a slight weight difference because of that, but probably not that big a deal. Okay, so the G unit is 331, which is uh, about 15 grams heavier than the Laver, and I think about the same weight as um, the Ultra was. All right, so the synthetic is 348, it's, and that's coming in right under our top line of 350 grams. Well, even though I've only played in G-Units for about an hour, like 12 years ago, I'm still excited to get out there and try both of these. See you soon. Hello and welcome back. It's been a few months since we were here, and we've decided that the two variations of the Reebok Vector Smash are different enough to review them separately, so today we're going to focus on the Vector Smash Sim. Obviously, these are pretty cut up when we took them out of the box, so let's first take a look at the mods. This is a pretty standard set of mods for a shoe that has thick outer material. We've cut the toe walls to open up the toe area and done the related lacing. We've also removed the outer layers of both the toe and inside surfaces to leave this thin inner material. Of course, we'll have a separate video that covers actually performing all of these mods. Oh, and I swapped the laces with the other Vector Smash because why wouldn't you? I unfortunately made a bit of a mistake on the left toe surface mod. I cut it too close to the edge, which has left it prone to a bit of tearing, but otherwise the mods and the shoes in general are holding up really well. The structure and stability has remained intact with all of the removed material, and the sole is showing no signs of deteriorating faster than expected. And of course, the outside surface with the original synthetic material will probably never suffer any real damage. To get onto the actual review, I have overwhelmingly positive feelings on these shoes, and I've been really loving playing them exclusively for the past few months. The best part about these are, of course, the surfaces, both of which are great sizes and shapes, and the modded thin material gives you a really nice feel with the bag. On the inside surface, after performing the mod, you have a nice deep pocket and a strong clipper wall thanks to the sole. 
I was also pleasantly surprised to find that the soles have a huge amount of grip on a gym floor, and I can't imagine having slip issues on any surface that you'd want to play on. Though I really like the toe, there is a small lip at the front which occasionally causes my toe kicks to shoot back towards me. I also get a bit of roll on my pixie sets, which could partially be my form. Either way, it doesn't really affect my strings or general control, but it is worth noting. I also had to readjust to playing with toe walls after about a year in the ultras, which functionally had no walls. This was initially frustrating, but it did help me to clean up my form where I had gotten a bit lazy. If you wanted to, you could trim these toe walls down, but I'm going to leave them as is. Regarding the overall structure, although the vectors are slightly heavier and bulkier than lavers, I haven't had any issues doing speed tricks, and I generally feel very agile and supportive to them. With a bit of extra bulk as compared to the more snug labor, they do have a slightly different playfield, but it's not a severe transition, and I suspect those that are used to G-units would feel right at home in these. And while the vectors overall feel great for everything related to high-level play, I did feel just slightly more athletic and springy in the Ultras, which is the only thing I found that I like a bit more about those shoes. Though the vectors are very comfortable to play in now that they're broken in, I initially did have a bit of discomfort when pushing off the ground due to my flat feet and the shape of the sole. This feeling has now gone away completely, and though it was annoying, this is a common enough issue with flat feet that I really can't attribute it to these shoes in particular. The breaking period took a few weeks, but I was enjoying playing in them from day one. To wrap things up, my normal US 10 size is a good but snug fit, and I might go up half a size if and when I get another pair. In general, I really like the look of these shoes, they're very classically footbaggy, and although the available colors right now are limited to white with accents, or all black, they do seem to be expanding their options. So based on the characteristics alone, I would highly recommend these for high-level play, but the real cherry on top is the price. $65 is in the range that we look at for shoes you can just do basics in, so to get something for such a low cost with such high quality is an amazing value. The price would make them great for beginners, but if you aren't ready to start cutting up your equipment, these unfortunately are not the shoes for you, because the stock material is just too thick to get the full benefit out of them. However, for those of you ready to dive into the mods, yeah, you should go get these. The Reebok Vector Smash Synth are the best shoes to come around for a freestyle footbag in a very long time, and I wouldn't be surprised if this became a new go-to for the sport. Thanks for watching this freestyle footbag shoe review of the Reebok Vector Smash Sin, and thank you to Taishi Ishida for finding these and reporting in the Discord server. As always, you can let us know either here or on Instagram if you found a shoe that you want us to try out, subscribe to Passback to keep up with our future shoe reviews and freestyle footbag videos, and see you next time. Please look at how amazing this box is.